Good evening, everyone. Welcome to St. Mark's. Our opening hymn this evening is number 201 in the Breaking Bread. If you would please rise as we begin our Mass. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. the Lord be with you. Amen. We gather on this beautiful weekend as we celebrate the Lord's resurrection together. As we enter into our sacred mysteries, we gather acknowledging our sins, and we ask for the Lord's mercy. Lord Jesus, you show us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. You give us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. You raise us all to newness of life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. strength of those who hope in you, graciously hear our pleas. And since without you mortal frailty can do nothing, grant us always the help of your grace, that in following your commands we may please you by our resolve and by our deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Ezekiel. Thus says the Lord God, I too will take from the crest of the cedar, from its topmost branches, 
tear off a tender shoot, and plant it on a high and lofty mountain. On the mountain heights of Israel I will plant it. It shall put forth branches and bear fruit and become a majestic cedar. Birds of every kind shall dwell beneath it, every winged thing in the shade of its boughs. And all the trees of the field shall know that I, the Lord, bring low the high tree, lift high the lowly tree, wither up the green tree, and make the withered tree bloom. As I, the Lord, have spoken, so will I do. The word of the Lord. from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians. Brothers and sisters, we are always courageous, although we know that while we are at home in the body, we are away from the Lord, for we walk by faith, not by sight. Yet we are courageous, and we would rather leave the body and go home to the Lord. Therefore, we aspire to please him, whether we are at home or away. For we must all appear before the judgment seat of Christ, so that each may receive recompense, according to what he did in the body, whether good or evil. The word of the Lord. Be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Jesus said to the crowds, This is how it is with the kingdom of God. 
It is as if a man were to scatter seed on the land, and would sleep and rise night and day, and through it all the seed would be sprout and through it all the seed would sprout and grow. He knows not how. Of its own accord the land yields fruit, first the blade, then the ear, then the full grain in the ear. And once the grain is ripe, he wields the sickle at once, for the harvest has come. He said, To whom shall we compare the kingdom of God? Or what parable can we use for it? It is like a mustard seed, that when it is sown in the ground, is the smallest of all the seeds on the earth. But once it is sown, it springs up and becomes the largest of plants, and puts forth large branches, so that the birds of the sky can dwell in its shade. With many such parables, he spoke the word to them, as they were able to understand it. Without parables, he did not speak to them, but to his own disciples, he explained everything in private. The Gospel of the Lord. And this is all what the kingdom of God is likened to. We know that we here on earth are here to proclaim the gospel and create the kingdom of God here on earth as we await for what's waiting for all of us who have given our life to Christ in that kingdom of God in heaven. It's a kingdom on earth and a kingdom that's not yet that we will experience in eternal life in heaven. Now, this parable that we hear um, in the gospel all about seeds, scattering seeds. On uh, Thursday morning, we have a wonderful group after the 9 a.m. Mass. We come down and uh, down in the hall and we we reflect on the scriptures for this coming weekend, and it's always fun to have conversation about uh, the different uh, angles of, of the weekend's gospel. And the conversation was very, very lively this week, all talking about, obviously, scattering seed. So somebody brought up, well, just like Johnny Appleseed, you know, who went and scattered seeds. And I said, huh? Like, so I have a confession to make. So the public school system failed me very, very badly. And <laughs> I thought it was, that was a cartoon. Okay, I didn't know it was a real person. So anyway, Johnny Appleseed was an actual... I know, it's really, really sad. Very, very sad. So I researched all about Johnny Appleseed today, and I found out that most of his uh, work was done in Ohio. I'm from Ohio. There, there is a museum for Johnny Appleseed like a half an hour from where my parents live. So anyway, I have a lot of catching up to do. So yes, he... So we went, you know, sprouting all the, these apple seeds all over, and, and we all have experience with planting seeds. Now, the, the line from the, the scripture that really got me and got a lot of people in our group was that the seed was, was scattered. And of course, then God takes over, and this, then the seed sprouts and grows into a big plant, and it says, and this, the person that scattered it knew not how. Now, all of us are called to scatter seeds, and I hope that we are all called to do something in our vocation, in our lives, to proclaim the gospel. And we all know that in our discipleship, doing nothing is not an option. If we're truly called to be disciples of Jesus Christ, be active Catholic Christians, we are all called to sprout seeds. And there's that famous saying from St. Francis of Assisi, that each of us are to preach at all times, and we're only supposed to use words if necessary. So by our conduct, by how we act, by how we are, we are indeed scattering seeds all over the place. But we can be all concerned because we're all control freaks in some ways that we want to see that, that seed sprout and we want to take control of make, making sure it happens. Well, guess what? It's usually not going to be up to us. We need to do the initial work. We let God take over and do the rest. I think we all have our, uh, our, our, our worries and concerns for our own families who we, we wanted to plant so many seeds, and maybe some of them are not practicing now, and what's going to happen? Well, we need to put the trust in God that we have indeed, by our example, are continually planting seeds, and you never know. It may be nourished and watered by people in their lives and by situations that they're placed in, but the initial seed, we have done our part in scattering it. There's another one in the group that says, well, I'm a very careless scatterer. You should check out my yard, he says. He says, I just scatter them all over the place and I let God do all the work. I guess you can do that too. I want to see his yard to see what, it actually, uh, what that looks like. But again, not scattering is not an option. 
That's what we're called to do in our vocation, in our, uh, in our discipleship as Catholic Christians, by our words, by our examples, by our very lives, we are scattering seeds. And we put the trust in God's hand because he indeed is going to make sure it grows. We can see in our own lives how that's happened. Seeds that have been planted in our lives and we are still here worshiping and very active all these years later. There must have been a seed in each one of our lives. And we let God continue to do his work. But he relies on us to do the scattering. And we stand together as one family in faith, and we profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In trust and confidence, we bring our prayers and petitions to our loving Father. That our Holy Mother Church may continue to receive the help of Christ in using her prophetic voice, we pray to the Lord. Lord that all people may come to know that Jesus is Lord of heaven and earth, we pray to the Lord. Lord that those who grow, prepare, and serve our food may be blessed abundantly, we pray to the Lord. That the seeds of faith planted in our hearts at baptism may continue to flourish and grow towards spiritual maturity. We pray to the Lord. Lord and we pray for all who have died and for all that died today, especially for Pat Trongo and Noah Stone Street, for whom this Mass is offered. That their souls and all of the souls of the faithful departed through the mercy of God rest in peace for eternal life. We pray to the Lord. And we pray for those prayers on our prayer line and for those that we voice in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear our we ask all these things through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Our offertory hymn is number 345.
pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours will be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who in the offering is presented here, provide for the twofold needs of human nature, nourishing us with food and renewing us with your sacrament. Grant, we pray, that the sustenance they provide may not fail us in body or in spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you so loved the world that in your mercy you sent us the Redeemer to live like us in all things but sin, so that you might love in us what you loved in your Son, by whose obedience we had been restored to the gifts of yours, that by sinning we had lost in disobedience. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as an exaltation we acclaim. indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts that we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night that he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice. And once more giving thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of his saving, the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, 
may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Mark and with all the saints, on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church here on earth, with your servant Francis, our Pope, Peter, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all of the clergy, and the entire people that you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you. And in your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you with their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with Let us turn to one another and offer the sign of peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are they who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
Our communion hymn is number 687.
let us pray. At this, as this reception of your holy communion, O Lord, foreshadows the union of the faithful in you, so may it bring about unity in your church, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. One more week to go before Vacation Bible School starts, as you can tell by our sign, who is usually not all off the ground. But anyway, sometimes it's on, sometimes it's off, but thank you to the Knights for trying to keep up with that, but the wind is awful. But anyway... I, I, I go, uh, I ramble. Anyway, VBS is a week from Monday, so if you haven't registered your child or your grandchild yet uh, for the week, the theme is scuba. Well, again, we'd love to have them. We have a great crew that's uh, going to be joining us. We'd love to have more. So again, call Lisa at the office Monday, Tuesday um, to register uh, your kids for VBS. And then lastly, um, of course, if you are not a father, sit down. <laughs> yes, there we go. I did it right. And you did it right. And we say a prayer of blessing uh, this afternoon for our fathers on this Father's Day weekend. God, our Father, in your wisdom and love, you have created us and called us to your own. Bless our fathers, that they may be strengthened as Christian fathers. Let the example of their faith and love shine forth. In moments of joy, rejoice with them. In times of struggle, give them your courage and perseverance. Grant that we, their sons and daughters, may honor and appreciate them always with a spirit of profound respect. May the example in prayer of St. Joseph inspire them to live out their vocation with courage. And we ask, we grant this all through Christ our Lord. Amen. And happy Father's Day weekend to our fathers. And you call join dads and stand up. Okay. And treat them to a nice cookout or whatever tomorrow. The Lord be with you. And with May Almighty God bless you, the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. St. Michael, the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all evil spirits, who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 611. <laughs>